Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. Kind of a cloudy, wet day here in the southwest, so I thought this would be a good chance for me to uh, give you the review of my new Halo View Bike Tango 12 rear monitor system that replaces the Bike Tango 7 I've been using. So if you missed the video on the Bike Tango 7 review, I'll link back to it. Also, I did an installation video on this system, and I'll link back to it if you missed that. Anyway, this is going to be the, the review of this unit. I'm going to kind of take a deep dive into its settings, and then we're also going to go through um, some of the videos I took, and I'll give you a, a look at them. Both this uh, rear-facing camera that's at the back of the trailer, mounted on, on the roof line at the back of the trailer, but it also has a second camera, this system. They call it a dash cam. It's really meant to be mounted on the front windshield facing forward. But you can see I already have a dash cam, so I don't really need to use it as that purpose. So what I did, just turn around the truck here. You see that camera right there, the bigger one. That's actually the Halo View unit that was going to be the dash cam. I've repurposed it as a rear facing cam to aid when I'm hooking up the trailer kind of helps out. Also, it's kind of nice when I unhook the trailer, I can use this actually as a, a rear view mirror. Um, so it's kind of nice if I'm not going very many, if I'm going a lot of places, I'd probably pull it off because I prefer actually a reflective mirror, but this thing will work as rear view mirror. So it's kind of handy. If I unhook, then I have at least I have a rear view mirror. And when I'm going to hook it up, I have a nice, visual of, of hooking the, the rig up so I really like that. Anyway let's get into this system here. It's a touchscreen system which is nice. So that's the rear view there. It's had pretty good wireless signal no problems. The little signal icon is here. Usually it's two to three bars for me. They say the max length is about 42 feet. Um, I have about a a 30 foot trailer behind me and hasn't been a problem. This dot up here means it's recording right now. And then you can see there's a row of icons below. There's a place to stop the recording where you could take a picture anytime you like. And there's a, a lock. You can lock video, I think, to save it right there. You can turn the, the microphone pickup on and off because it will pick up sound in the cab if you're talking. Um, this is to reverse the video, so now we'll take a look at the two different cameras there. <clears throat> and one more, now that's just looking out the back window. I'm hooked up right now. And then back to the rear cam. And then also we have voice commands, so there's different ones you can do here. Open screen, close screen, lock the video, take a picture. Show front cam, show rear cam, okay. open audio, close audio. That sort of okay. thing. <laughs> Just goes okay when it answers me. Show rear screen. Or show rear picture. So, show rear camera. Okay. There we go. And finally, there's the home. So we'll go back to that. And you can see there's all sorts of settings on here. This is driving recorder. That's what I was in. There's also CarPlay for Apple folks in Android Auto, which is what I have. Um, there's a thing to play music through the, the phone. Time, brightness control, different steps there. You can replay videos that you've, that's been recorded. A uh, thing to set up your Bluetooth for your phone. And then also this FM launch, I'll explain that later. So let's we'll go into settings here. CarPlay position, left, right, or full screen. Camera format, and just your, your resolution. This is for the rear camera, and N is for NTCS. P is for PAL for European formats. Resolution, that's for the dash cam resolution. Go away. Loop recording, so it will overwrite the card. It has a slot for up to 256 gigabyte card in it for recording. And you can pull it out and then you could 
you know, put it into a laptop and review the, the recordings. Um, lapse recording. There's a time lapse feature for parking, and that's how many frames per, sec per second it does. Um, parking time. So you would need the power to constantly on to do that. I've actually not been doing that because I have it set for power going off. I also have a bunch of dash cameras already. Date water mark. Car OSD. You could put your license plate in there and it'll do a, a on-screen display of the recording with your license plate. Screen saver for this. Well, if I'm using it as a rear monitor, I don't want the screen saver, so I leave it off. Not sure what channel delay is. Channel set, that's for doing your images. So I'm using this as a rear view mirror in my truck, both cameras, so I have them flipped, reversed. So you'll notice when I do the, when I play the video, everything will look kind of odd to you and names will be printed backwards. That's because I'm not using it as a forward facing video. I have everything as a rear view mirror video. Uh, record settings language, there's a time clock frequency 60 cycle or 50 that's also for European and key volume is what you're hearing now so I can turn that off and then it doesn't make a noise there we go so I should also mention the power box here it plugs into a 12 volt outlet cigarette lighter type adapter socket it's got some uh, a pair of a usb plugs down there so you can also plug usb stuff into it to charge things um, there's your antennas they move around and they're what transmits the signal to the rear camera at the back of the rv so far it's uh been okay as far as my leg goes i haven't really had bumped it while driving or anything it's just just out of the way there i guess if it was a problem i could uh, maybe use a, a power box in here and then plug the power box into it and move it around a bit but it's been fine and it's got several functions on the front here you've got power turn it on and off um, you've also got this says NP that's to select your uh, NTCS or PAL you don't have to worry about that but if you get a scrambled picture you want to hold that down because it switches it back to the NTCS uh, system that we use in North America um, there's also here, um, it kind of looks like a chain that's to do pairing of the camera. Uh, if you hold it down for a few seconds, or this light here, if I press it once, what happens is up here on the screen, you can see a little light bulb shows up. And that's actually at the back of the rig at night. It would have, it would, the camera would put out a very bright LED light. So that's for kind of parking the trailer back up, but you wouldn't want that running while you're driving. That's for sure you'd be blinding the people behind you. And then this one here with the double arrows, I'll show you what it does. Each time you press it, it kind of switches the image. So right now you can see the cougar behind me. It's actually a cougar. It's on that side, which which is the opposite side because I have a, this is a rear view mirror. You can see the cougar writing is backwards now if i switch this what it does first is it flips it and press it again and it reverses it so now you see the trailer has gone onto the other side and the writing's actually proper so it's kind of like i say everybody every time i do videos people always say oh it's it's backwards it's backwards but it's because i'm using it as a rear view mirror so i'm just going to flip it once more and then it'll flip over to the side so it makes sense when you're driving because cars will come up on the proper side of the rig if you have it where all the writing is nice it's actually the camera view is proper but when you're using it as a rear view mirror you'll see a car coming up one side and it'll come up on the other side really throw you off another thing i should mention is there is wi-fi on this display unit and you can download an app called roadcam and then you can actually view what's going on on the screen you know there's the the rear view again you can flip it around and see that so anywhere within wi-fi distance probably you know about 100 feet you can connect to it and take a look what's going on in there you can also go back and play back your videos Let's stop recording there you can take a picture just like the same okay. <laughs> 
So yeah, you can go back on your phone and check out all the videos that have been recorded. And another handy thing is you can go in here and change some of the settings as well. Up here, so you can see the same sort of thing I showed you before with all the different uh, settings can be done through the the app. That's called Roadcam. Yeah, it's like all these these smartphone apps. Sometimes they're sort of flaky, but handy to have. Same thing for a quick quick visual of what you've recorded, or remotely, you know, you might have this on for some reason, and then you want to connect to it within, you know, remote connect within probably 100 or 200 feet, whatever the Wi-Fi range is, and you can have a look at what's going on. Next, I can't give you CarPlay. I don't have an Apple phone, but I do have an Android, so we'll go into here. And it's hooked to my phone now. You can see it still will give you the, the rear view image there. You can actually swipe it and go between cameras. Um, I like this here. If you wanted to use this as a GPS, I have a dedicated GPS, so I don't use it. But you could see there's where we're located. If I wanted to go somewhere, say I wanted to go to Quartzsite, and I just go like that. And I also have other things there. I have a tune-in radio. You can get different apps and hook it through there. There's a Waze, which is a different type of uh, um, thing. It's kind of like Google Maps. I have a tune-in radio here, so you can see I can play that. So there it is on a sports talk channel. I just want to show you the different sound options. So there is a speaker in here, and that's what's playing now. Or we can go back and exit this. And right here, FM launch, and I can switch this over to FM. What that does is it's rebroadcasting on an empty FM channel. So I go down here, 88.7, and you can hear. But on my system, there's a lot of static you can hear. I haven't figured that out. I've tried a bunch of different channels and it's always the same, so I don't know if it's some kind of interference going on. I have an external antenna. Maybe they expect you to have one of those windshield antennas, so maybe that's the case. Unfortunately, there's no auxiliary output on this, so you can't run it auxiliary out and into your radio. So you even have that option of the radio or coming through there. So to give it a fair shake here, I brought in a uh, FM radio. It's not everyone else's weekend. It's our, it's my weekend and it's starting. Actually, not too yes, bad on that. And we're make the most so it must be something weird with my my radio going on there. So your mileage may vary on that, but it does actually work pretty good through this. FM radio. This week for helping me put the program together on North by Northwest. Really appreciate her help. And uh, join us next week because we will hear from author Janie Chang. She writes historical fiction. Her latest book, The Porcelain Moon, spans from Paris to Shanghai. Another interesting feature it has is it uh, can do voice commands through the, the Android or the, the Apple. So I could just go like this. Death Valley. So there, there we go. It would navigate me to Death Valley. Well, I guess I have, I have other options. I don't really use this feature that much, but I thought I'd, I'd show it to you at all. I've used it, and all seems to work okay. Sometimes the voice com commands get a little buggy with the amount of sound, and I got a diesel engine and all that. But what I mainly use this for is the the front and back view, and mostly it's for when I'm driving. And we're looking out the front here at, at the rear view mirror, but I'm actually seeing the rear view of the trailer. So uh, let's get to some footage here. I'm going to go through and show you some uh, footage of me towing with a view out the back. And we'll get some footage from the other camera as well. And then I'll go through uh, my likes and dislikes. There are a few dislikes to this system, but overall it's been pretty good. 
Okay, so these are recording straight out of the, the camera's uh, SD card. I haven't altered them or anything or edited them in any way, so you can sort of see what the, the pure footage is like. Uh, the footage on the actual screen is a little bit better because, um, you know, there, there's some kind of loss in the recording, but overall looks pretty good. This is the rear-facing uh, dash cam that normally you'd put on the front and I decided to put on the, the rear of the truck. So you can see it can be used as a rear view mirror for the truck. Works pretty good. Like I say, if I was using it for short trips and stuff, it's fine. But if I was using it long term, I'd probably take it off and just use my rear view mirror. And here it is, another view just backing into camp. Giving an indication of how it is in a, in a bright scene there. And we'll do kind of a hookup. This is one of the, the things I like about it is I can use it as a rear view mirror and it helps me when I'm back in the truck, I can really get things lined up with it versus my regular rear view mirror. And then usually I would have the, the I'd have to turn, put the monitor on after I hooked up because the old monitor didn't have this kind of view. So uh, that's why I think I'm gonna be using this one versus the, the Byte Tango 7 and a little bit of you pulling out. Those words there are a reflection from the inside of, of something that's sitting on the back seat. But uh, it's pretty cool. Kind of see how, how the hitch is going. If I want to check on the bed or, and, and what the hitch and stuff's going on, I can just swipe the screen and, and have a quick look at it. So here's the rear screen going down a, a busy interstate. And it gives you a an indication of what it's going to look like. It's really nice to be able to see the traffic behind you. That's the, the big thing about these ob rear observation systems that I love. And there's a little bit of a uh, jitter in the motion, you know, because we're going probably about, you know, 60 miles an hour there. This is one of the downfalls I find of this particular camera is it in bright scenes it kind of overexposes like you see how the road is really bright like it's a really bright sunny day right now but you can see how it, things kind of wash out and uh, you get to white white areas now the pavement is changing now we're actually hitting a brand new patch of pavement that's really kind of dark black they must have just paved this this is going through Glamis uh, sand dunes, Imperial sand dunes, the Glamis were where they like people like to go with their off-road vehicles. So it looks like they put a brand new stretch of road. So it doesn't look too bad that you can see the sky is quite washed out in this scene. But you know, as a as a rear observation, it's fine. You know, basically you want to see if there's somebody behind you. It's kind of windy. That that semi truck's kind of being blown a bit there, blowing sand. You know, so a little bit of a, a good sideways breeze as we went through there the other day. Here's more of a close-up view. So the resolution is quite good, nice and sharp. You can see it's kind of getting a bit of a, a lag here. In the, it's got to do probably do with the wireless signal. Maybe there's wireless in that, that semi-truck that's interfering. You never know what's going on. Here's another bright scene. I'm entering a little town in uh, Southern California called, I uh, forget what it's called, but uh, the same thing, the cement was really bright white, so with the bright sun, it was really kind of washing things out. Some of the poles, too, had a little bit of a uh, double image on them. Kind of picky, but I just want you to see what the actual real-life footage is going to look like. And we'll turn a corner and have the sun almost straight behind us so you can see it really starts to get washed out under that, that type of scene. So I've told Hale of you about that. So maybe they can work on adjusting that in the future.
So what advantage of it being so bright during the, the really sunny daytime scenes is it still is quite bright when it's at dusk. Like you can see this dusk scene and it's very bright looking back. This is what the camcorder is showing. So it actually isn't that bright out right now. It's just, just a little bit past sunset and it's dusk. So the rear camera looks very bright. You can see the this one's not quite as as good as a lot of noise in the scene. So I think they just may have kind of <clears throat> didn't set that auto exposure quite correct. But it is advantage at dusk. I'll wait till it gets really dark out, and we'll come back, and then I'll I'll test that uh, that rear uh, spotlight it has. Okay, pitch black now, so we'll try the spotlight. There we go. Check it out. Lights up a fair amount of the back there. Give you a closer look. There we are. And we'll turn it off again. So, works pretty good. Finally, let's go through my pros and cons as I see them. Start with the pros. So it's got a nice bright picture in the cab, easy to see. Uh, the finish is a matte finish on it, so it's not too reflective in there. So it's quite nice as a, as a rear view monitor when it's mounted on the mirror there. It also can be mounted on your dash or there is a window mount that came with it, but I prefer putting it up the mirror. And because it's a nice wide screen and thin, it, it mounts up there really well out of the way. Uh, it's got the touch screen versus uh, the older models had buttons on them, so it's a little easier to, to do settings, that kind of stuff. Um, good wireless signal. I was getting about two to three bars usually. Uh, no blackouts or anything. Um, and the, the footage was pretty pretty streamed pretty well. There was the odd glitching as it went at speed. But overall, I'm quite happy with it compared to other ones I've used. Uh, the rear camera that is at the back of the RV is 1080 HD and it records at that. The front one, which I have mounted to the rear window of the truck, is actually what they call a 2K 1440. Um, it's a little better than, than normal HD and they both do 30 frames a second. Uh, then you've got the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay feature, so you can do GPS and maps and, you know, have music and do phone calls. There's voice commands, voice controls, all that kind of extra bells and whistles. I don't find myself using that much, but it's in there for some people. Um, then we got to sort of the cons or dislikes. Uh, I found there's poor sound on my FM radio. You know, I demoed that quite a bit of static, although I checked out a different radio that I had and it was fine. Um, the sound coming out of the unit is kind of kind of tinny. Um, they just don't have any big speaker in there. So it'd be nice if there was an auxiliary out that I could take the sound out of it and put it into my, my radio, but there's no plug for that. Uh, and then the, the uh, bright sunny days, you could see how it was kind of overexposed and you got a lot of kind of glaring white, so it kind of lost detail and that sort of thing. Uh, the mirror mount had rubber bands and they were really super tight. I ended up taking them off and using some Velcro, Velcro straps, you know, fabric straps that I used previously and that worked well. So you could buy yourself those, but nice if they would include that. Uh, the back of the display does get quite hot when it's running. I noticed after uh, running it for a while, um, you feel that it's quite hot to the touch. Uh, the, de the cable that came with the dash cam is only 1.5 meters, which is about 5 feet, so it actually couldn't, wasn't long enough to reach to the back window of my crew cab in my truck, so I had to actually use a cable that I previously had from another system, so it'd be nice if they included a longer cable if anybody wants to do what I did. 
And uh, there's actually, for some people, there may be a problem. There's only, it only can do two cams, the, the dash cam and the rear cam. There's no capability of expanding it for side cameras or anything like that. But overall, it seems to perform pretty well. I'm going to use it the rest of the, the trip back north. Just got a couple more months in our snowbird trip here. If there's any problems, <clears throat> I'll come back and let you know. And also give you a link to the, the new, the Halo View page on this. This just came out in January, so it's a brand new release for them. And you can go to that if you want to get some more information or download the manual and have a look for yourself. Anyway, that's all for now. Till next time, Ray from Love You RV. Cheers, guys.